Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Long lines for water and a longer wait for repairs to the broken main that has more than 130,000 Metro Detroiters under a continuing boil water advisory. The discovery of another problem inside that nearly 50 year old water main pushing the estimated fixed time back to Labor Day weekend. And we're also learning more about past inspections of the main. Local Force Rod Maloney is live in Shelby Township with the new information coming to light today, Rod. Yeah, Kimberly, first of all, let's get an idea just how tall this pipe is. It's 10 feet tall. This is a regulation basketball hoop, and I just missed the shot. But that's how tall it is, okay? So that's what they have to replace. In the meantime, they're giving away a lot of water here. The state having an emergency declaration. 700 gallons of water given out this afternoon. This is the second time that they brought in pallets full of water. The broken pipes located in a distant farm field near Fort Gratiot on the northeast side, north of I-69. We've only been able to fly Drone 4 and Sky 4 over it. The Great Lakes Water Authority provided these ground photos. CEO Sue Coffey saying in a press briefing today, the broken 10-foot pipe went in the ground in 1973, and they expected it to last a lot longer than it did. She admits there was no expectation it would fail now. So this was very unexpected. This pipe is uh, expected to have many, many more years of its useful life left. These pipes are, you know, 50 to 100 year useful life type pipes. Uh, so until we understand the nature of the failure, we're not going to know why. Unlike a sewer pipe where you can run a video camera through and see the cracks, a water pipe is a closed pressurized system, which means... I don't, I don't believe it has been inspected, and I, I don't think it would be typical for it to have been inspected, say, up until recent, recent years. That's accomplished by floating a high-tech ball inside those pressurized pipes. But because the water is off now, they can walk part of the system, get a good idea whether there are more weak spots in the 860 miles of pipe that they have. But ratepayers like Mental Bowden aren't so thrilled with this revelation there's never been an inspection. Hello? Well, yeah. This is, uh, was not a news flash. They had to, someone needs to be monitoring those things at all times. You can't tell me that that just happened in there. Oh, surprise. No, I can't believe it. Now, the expectation is they're going to be able to walk about 26 miles of the pipe that is now shut down as a result of this, hoping that they don't find any more problems. But if they do, that could extend these things farther along. The pipe, by the way, the, the pieces of the pipe that they're looking to order from Texas now are between 16 and 20 feet long, and they expect to have some in here by Tuesday. And we have full coverage of all of the details about where you can get water and, and uh, the boil water advisory and the rest is all on our website site at clickondetroit.com. Okay, Rod, we appreciate it. President Biden signing a landmark climate change and health care bill this afternoon just after 4 p.m. Some of the highlights of the new law include a huge investment of $430 billion to reduce carbon emissions. It helps 13 million Americans pay for health insurance by extending subsidies used under the Affordable Care Act and sets a 15 percent minimum tax for large corporations. Senator Debbie Stabenow spoke about the Inflation Reduction Act today, specifically how it will impact prescription drug prices. Prices. She says the new law is a game changer when it comes to holding drug companies accountable. As a backdrop, we pay the highest prices in the world in the United States. Highest prices in the world, about three times more than the average uh, person in another country. The prescription drug companies have the highest profits in the world. They will say they can't lower profits because of the cost of research, but most of the basic research in our country is funded by us, by taxpayers. Hundreds of billions of dollars that goes to companies to invest in cutting edge research, which I support. Sign me up. Sign me up. I just think if we're helping to pay for the discoveries, we ought to get a better deal. Senator Stabenow also highlighted other aspects of the bill, including starting in January, Medicare Part D recipients out of pocket costs for insulin will be capped at $35 per month. And starting in 2025, their total out of pocket drug costs will be capped at $2,000 a year. Medicare will now be able to negotiate the best drug prices, which it hasn't been able to do because of a law passed during the George W. Bush presidency. And also, big pharma companies will be penalized 
penalized if they raise drug costs above inflation. Expect more on the Inflation Reduction Act. Just go to NBC Nightly News uh, at 6.30. Students who attended ITT Technical Institute and still have outstanding federal loans are going to see that debt forgiven. That news coming from the U.S. Department of Education after the feds found the now defunct chain of schools vastly overstated the quality of its programs and misled students. Mara McDonald live in Troy tonight. Uh, Mara, ITT had several campuses around Michigan. Uh, Devin, they sure did. Th this was their Troy campus. They had one as far north as Swartz Creek, Dearborn, Canton. And the bottom line is this. If you were a student starting in, say, 2005, all the way up to when they shuttered in 2016, and you still have a balance due on your federal loan, the feds say it's forgiven. ITT shut its doors in 2016 after the U.S. Department of Education leveled heavy sanctions against the for-profit school chain, leaving students like Tyler Cole in the lurch. So I just felt kind of like heartbroken and disappointed and just a little bit of anger. Cole was worried about credits that didn't transfer, but in a follow-up phone call with him today, he didn't have any federal loans because his program was done under the auspices of high school. He's one of the lucky ones. The U.S. Department of Ed came down on ITT for everything from misrepresenting the quality and marketability of its programs to pushing students into risky loans, and there were a lot of risky loans for worthless degrees. Overall, the federal government announcing it is canceling $3.9 billion in federal student debt for 208,000 ITT students. The forgiveness coming from what's called the borrower defense, which is meant to protect students from colleges that make false advertising claims or otherwise commit fraud. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona saying today the evidence shows that for years ITT's leaders intentionally misled students about the quality of their programs in order to profit off federal student loan programs with no regard for the hardship this would cause. Back here live per the U.S. Department of Education, students with those outstanding federal balances, they're not going to have to apply for this forgiveness. It will be automatic. We're live in Troy tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. That's good, good update. All right, Mara. The state still has a lot of investigating to do about what went wrong at Tri-Bar Manufacturing, allowing a toxic chemical to leak into the Huron River system. But some people have already made up their minds and have taken out their frustration on the home of the company's CEO. Victor Williams is in Northville, where police detained several people for vandalism. About 20 protesters were in this neighborhood, all dressed in black, targeting the home of the person they believe is responsible for the pollution of the Huron River. Now, when the police got here, all of them ran, but about six were detained. Half a dozen people were detained and released for their roles in the vandalism of a home belonging to Tribar Technology CEO and chairman Kevin Crampton around 6.30 a.m. Friday morning. Water is life was the message protesters wanted to get over to the CEO, as you can clearly see from the nearly cleaned graffiti in the driveway. Crampton's company, Tribar Manufacturing, is widely regarded as the reason why the cancer-causing chemical hexavalent chromium leaked into the Huron River. It's alleged that a Tribar employee overwrote waste treatment alarms over 450 times within three hours on the same day the toxic release apparently began. And all the driveway, garage, and home was spray painted along with several vehicles that were also damaged as well. Police are still calling this an ongoing investigation. Now we did try talking to Mr. Crampton, but no one came to the door. Victor Williams, Local 4. Hey, Victor, thanks. Today in the retrial for two men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer, prosecutors called another man charged in the plot to testify. Uh, Ty Garbin already pleaded guilty and agreed to cooperate in the case. He told the courtroom that Adam Fox and Barry Croft Jr., seen here, were his co-conspirators in the plot. Fox and Croft are on trial for a second time now in conspiracy charges as a jury couldn't reach a verdict earlier this year in the first go-round. In the morning, the defense attorneys grilled an FBI informant about the steps he took to gather evidence. Tonight, police in Ann Arbor are asking for your help to find a thief. They say this man is a person of interest in a bank robbery at the Chase Bank on Stadium near Packard. It happened one month ago. We don't know how much was taken. If you know this person, call Ann Arbor Police.
COVID cases are up over the last week in Michigan. State reporting 23,165 new cases over the past seven days. So the average at more than 3,300 cases per day. That's up 1,000 cases a day from uh, last week when we averaged 2,300. And we've lost another 103 lives in Michigan over the past week. The Red Cross is urging Metro Detroiters to donate blood and Gardner White is stepping up to help. It's opening its stores for blood drives just like this one in Rochester Hills. A drop in donations has caused the Red Cross blood supply to shrink nearly 20% in recent weeks. If you didn't get to give today, you'll have another chance Thursday at the locations there on your screen. There are special offers to encourage donations, so look for details on the health page of clickondetroit.com. Well, a few showers here and there on an otherwise very nice day. Let's check in with